And I'm going to encourage you to uh, go ahead and mute as we begin worship. We'll have opportunity to um, unmute, to share as we progress through this service. Thank you so much for helping us uh, do that. Welcome to this worship on August 23rd with Parkway United Church of Christ, where through God's spirit, we seek to listen deeply, build community, and act for justice. We gather on the unceded land of the Saponi, Chera, Catawba, and Tupelo. We live in an economy shaped by enslavement, racial violence, and economic inequity. We worship longing for the wisdom and the courage to acknowledge these truths while working toward a more equitable future. I'm going to invite you to join me in a, in a body prayer, very simple, you can remain seated if you'd like, that we used this past Wednesday for our Vespers. It comes from the community of Julian of, of Norwich. We begin with our hands out in front of us in the posture await. And we move oh, there you are. to our hands above our heads to the posture of allow, allowing whatever comes from sacred presence to, to be joined into our lives. And then accept, accepting all that might come to us from God. and close with the gesture of attend, attending those gifts and that presence in our relationships, not only with the human community, but the entire cosmos. Let's try that again in silence. Amen. Thank you, everyone. At this time, I invite you uh, to begin thinking about what you would like to share in terms of celebrations and prayer concerns. You can unmute or you can type into our chat function uh, to share in that way. But before we move to that, go ahead and unmute yourselves. And in this robust and, uh, and chaotic way, share a sign of peace. Peace. Good morning. Peace. Good morning. Peace. Good morning. Peace. Good morning. Peace to everyone. Peace. Everyone. Morning. 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 Good morning, Jim and Mary. Good morning. Mary and Bob. Good morning, everyone. Nancy and Francie. Good morning. Hey, everyone. Good morning, Taylor. Hey Mary, good morning. Carol, good morning. 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 Peace of Christ, Spirit, and Creator to each and every one of you and the wider community to whom we are richly and deeply connected. Uh, it is time for a celebration of prayer concerns. We hold in our deepest prayers, uh, Craig C. and all of our choir members in this time. We remember all families who have experienced loss in the midst of this pandemic. For Shirley N. and for Sandy A. For all of those who in our community are facing eviction right now. Um, I've been in dialogue with the volunteers from Housing Justice Now, and they've tell, told me that in the past two weeks, 450 people 
are in process uh, for eviction here in our community. We um, open this up. Uh, you might want to mute unless you've got something to share, but um, this is a time for celebration and prayer concerns. I want to uh, have my uh, nephew, Will, uh, in your prayers. He is in a house where there's COVID and he's at college and he's being tested, but he, as far as I know, he hasn't heard if he has it yet or not. So prayers for him. My cousin David is still being treated for chemo and with chemo, but it's not working very well. Pray for him and his family. I'll, I'll share some that have been shared in our chat function. Uh, happy birthday to Beth and uh, prayers with her as she continues to face financial issues. Prayers with Morgan, who continues to uh, uh, be in the hospital. Uh, prayers with neighbor Betty on behalf of Tim. Um, on behalf of Cynthia, for elder Aunt Alma in Portland, who's not strong enough to continue an ongoing pro protest. Prayers for a special intention by Lil. Prayers for all the incarcerated. The pandemic is rampant in prisons and many staff are absent from Anna. Prayers for Lee today as it is Nathan's birthday from Andrea. Any others? Well, we will continue to hold all of these and many more in heart, mind, and prayer. As we move to our time of musical reflection, I'm going to pass this on to Carol Hennick. Our music reflection today comes from a song from the community of Taizai, where they bring people from around the world who gather there um, and sing often in different languages so that everyone can feel included. It's a place of peace. So our song today is one you might know well. And so I encourage you, if you would like to sing along from the very first time, if you'd like to, you could also just hum along and let us carry the words for you. We will sing it several times so that gradually it'll move from words we know in our mind to the love of God and the calling for God from our heart. The words are printed in your bulletin, or again, you can just hum along if you'd prefer. Bless the Lord, my soul. And bless God's holy name. Bless the Lord, my soul, who leads me into life. Bless the Lord, my soul, and bless God's the Lord my soul who leads me into life. Bless the Lord my soul and bless God's holy name. Bless the Lord my soul who leads me into
bless the Lord all our souls who leads us into life. Thank you, Carol. Our scripture is um, from the Psalms, Psalm 71, verses 17 through 24. I uh, hear now these holy words. O oh God, from my youth you have taught me, and I still proclaim your wondrous deeds. So even to old age and gray hairs, O oh God, do not forsake me until I proclaim your might to all of the generations to come. Your power and your righteousness, O oh God, reach the high heavens. You who have done great things, O oh God, who is like you? You who have made me see many troubles and calamities will revive me again. From the depths of the earth, you will bring me up again. You will increase my honor and comfort me once again. I will praise you with the harp for your faithfulness. Oh my God, I will sing praises to you with the lyre. Oh, Holy One of Israel, my lips will shout for joy when I sing praise to you. My soul also which you have rescued all day long. My tongue will talk of your righteous help. For those who tried to do me harm have been put to shame, have been disgraced. Mm. This is what the Spirit is saying to all of God's people. I learned from many of you the ways of prayer in conversation with you. You mix concern with gratitude. You mix memory with wondering, grief with thanks, aches with delight, bitterness with fresh peaches. As I listen, sometimes the very things which overwhelm you, I have come to understand are also things you would never trade away. You teach me that prayer is a jumble, a knotted mass of thread which only the Holy One can bring order into a tapestry. Perhaps many of us have shied away from much petition in prayer. Unless we're really down on our fortunes, we may stick mostly to praise, to gratitude, to thanksgiving, because begging might just embarrass us. Even in our worship, when we did an audit of all of our hymns last year, we realized we spent less than 10% of our time singing in lament. But the truth of the spiritual life is it all goes together. All of it stirred together is what gets us through this life, this world, these disappointments, along with our memories of relief and hope and glory. So reading the Psalms, we become intimate with this jumble as, leap, as singers leap from railing to praising, from thanksgiving to shaking a fist at God. Sure, scholars put all of the Psalms in categories, but most of the Psalms sort of defy these tidy categories. And so it is with Psalm 71. This Psalm is clearly a seasoned prayer speaking to God, singing to God, surrounded by trouble, looking back on a long life of depending on God. Though she wails at the sense of distance of holy presence, she fills her mouth with praise. So this prayer in Psalm 71 integrates all of the different categories, lament and praise, memory and hope, petition and thanksgiving. One makes space for the other in honest, spleen, rumbling dialogue with the one upon whom we depend. We, first of all, lean on God. We are invited to be continually aware of God and we are promised revival from the depths in the words of this psalm. So first, we lean on God. We may not always depend on those in community to have our interests at heart, but there is somebody we can depend on. We may not depend on elected leaders to respond to our needs or uh, the vision of justice we long for, but there is somebody we can depend on. We may not depend on our own bodies to fend off all of the vulnerabilities of growing over, older, but there is somebody we can depend on. We lean on God in the midst of anxiety and uncertainty and hope and renewal. The psalmist sings, I have leaned on you, O Holy One, from birth. You took me from my mother's womb, God. 
When I can't stand up, I lean on you like a bed rail. When I'm on trial, I lean on you like a courtroom bar. When I lose my balance, I lean on you like a cane. When I've lost my way, I lean upon you, my rock and my sure defense. I lean on you, God, when there is nothing else to lean on. The psalm also asserts an honest give and take, a conversation that is not occasional. It's not just in the high times or the low times, but it is all the time, continually, all day long. The psalmist says at least four times, when I open my eyes through the crust of sleep, I go to you. When I see the furrow on my forehead growing deeper as I look in the mirror and brush my teeth, I call on you. When I see uh, the news or hear the news, I reach for you. When I'm harvesting beans in the garden, I am aware of you. When I'm on a walk, I look for you. Before I bite into that August delicious tomato sandwich, I praise you. When I work and wonder, I listen for you. When I grow weary and restless and wish things were very different, I breathe with you. When I relieve myself in the bathroom, yes, Lord, I give thanks to you. When I prepare for bed, I place my life in your hands, O oh God. All day long, the psalmist says, day after day, so that I can remember why I'm here and what I'm for, where the courage comes from. I continually lean on you, O oh God. <clears throat> Finally, the psalmist sings of revival from the depths, the depths of the earth, from the depths we are brought up. Usually, when we think uh, about biblical, the depths, we often think of hell. But the Psalms also see the depths as a place of birth and renewal. In God's hands are the depths of the earth, the psalmists say. You are embroidered, broidered, embroidered, embroidered in Psalm 139. You are embroidered in the multicolors in the depths of the earth. I triumph from the depths of the earth. When we praise from the depths, we know we are not abandoned. All day long, my tongue will talk of your righteous help. Not when I'm on easy street, but when I'm in the depths, in the MRI, at 4 a.m. with a panic attack, when the police stop you and you don't know what for, when the unemployment claim is denied again, when the bills pile up, when the news on the phone is not good, all day long, my tongue will talk of your righteous help. Not to deny the truth or the hurt, not to be polite or Pollyanna or keep up the facade, but to integrate all of the ways we are in relationship with God. Lament and praise are twins. Francis Weller in that incredible book, Wild Edge of Sorrow writes, how much sorrow I can hold is how much gratitude I can give. How much sorrow I can hold is how much gratitude I can give. Lament excavates a space for praise. And praise from the depths allows our vulnerability in our grief without giving up. Allows us to keep working, massaging that lament into pliability so it does not become hard and ossified. When the three boys of Israel were in Nebuchadnezzar's furnace without burning up, you know they had a song of praise on their lips. When the hooves of Pharaoh's horses were splashing ever closer to the Passover people in the reedy seas, you know there was an ancient song of praise rolling down, down the line. When Esther called for a fast for three days and waited, waited, waited for, right, for the right moment outside the king's chamber, you know the people of God were lifting God up in praise. When Paul and Silas bent the bars of prison, you can almost hear the sound, the mighty sound of praise rising up in the night. When Jesus was nearly thrown off a cliff, what words of praise did he cry? When Jesus was in the garden ready for the arrest in the Garden of Gethsemane, in the Garden of Gethsemane, there was lament, there was deep lament, but there was also trust and praise. When the Madres of Chile gathered illegally to appeal for their disappeared beloved 
day after day after day, what words of trust did they cast on the Lord? When the Liberian women refused to have relations with their men until the Civil War was ended, imagine the prayers of praise used in their organizing. When the KKK came riding into the campus at Daytona Beach of young women of African descent, Mary McLeod Bethune instructed all of the women, sing with your hearts, sing out to God in glory, and the hooded men turned back. When the freedom riders were stuck in jail with great uncertainty about their fate, the spirituals rose cell to cell, hour after hour to give them strength. When the women of the Philippines and Colombia and Yemen and Rwanda and Kosovo organized to man peace, their assemblies were punctuated with songs of praise. All day long, my tongue will sing of your righteous help, O God. I lean on you. I continually offer you praise. I praise you even and especially from the depths. What I have in my heart, I give you, God. The bile and the beauty, the lament and the levity, all day long mixed up together. You take the knotted mass of my life and my experience and my emotion and you weave my body into a tapestry of purpose. All day long, hallelujah, we give God praise. Amen. So at this point, I invite you to um, engage in a, a bit of a storytelling ritual, if you'd like. The, the invitation is to share a, a sentence, or maybe two sentences, of a time that you know in your life you did something good and important that made a difference for somebody or somebody else. And as we listen to these testimonies, we listen to discern, discern the qualities of that person that are at play in their experience. So I open up, if you want to unmute, and share a, a sentence or two about one of those experiences when you know you've had a positive impact on somebody else's life. Well, years ago, I was on my way back to um, where I was living in Winston-Salem then with, um, Anyway, it was Christmas. I just come from a Christmas celebration with my parents. I think I was still in school. I don't remember. No, it was, F anyway, it was a long drive and it was cold and it was rainy. And I saw this couple, something in me said, I know they're not trying to out, be out to get me or anybody else. They're in trouble. Their car broke down. So I offered them a lift and sure enough, they were just in that predicament. And the lady had a bad cold coming on, a very sore throat. And so, you know, they originally just said, no, you can leave us, you know, just down the road here. But I took them all the way where they needed to go. And um, this is before I had treatment for my ADHD. And I know I probably talked their ears off, but even so, they looked like they were really grateful for the lift. It was a, my heater was working, it was a warm car. I also uh, felt very sorry for the lady's sore throat and I had some um, sore throat relieving lozenges. So I gave her those and you know I, I didn't need them anymore. And I had this old muffler, not for a car, for a throat in the back seat where she was and I said maybe you could put that around your throat you know I found it <laughs> it's not really mine but anyway it's going to a good cause and uh, so she kept looking at me like I don't believe this she gratefully you know look I don't believe this person you know what's happening but anyway I got them all the way to where they needed to go 
And they said, well, you don't really need to go out of the way. I said, it's okay. I'm not fighting a schedule right now. And uh, so I got them all the way where they needed to go. And I, then I got on my merry way and I, I just felt good about it. Thank you, Beth. Thank you so much. Sorry, I know that was a lot more than just a few words. <laughs> let's, let's, uh, do, try, I know it's hard to capture it in a sentence or two, but so we can have a number of people share. Anybody else? I um, was really grateful that I got to be present with a patient one time whose family couldn't be with him for his open heart surgery. And whenever he was in recovery in ICU, I got to hold his hand while they um, were getting ready to extubate him, which was really mm. nice and something I'm never going to forget. Hallelujah. Thank you, Andrea. Yes, Rebecca. Um, not nearly as meaningful as Andrea's, but I was thinking of when I left Winston-Salem uh, and had to clean out my apartment and when I had to clean out my apartment in China to move back. Um, I gave away a lot of stuff to a lot of people and I'm happy that I could just, you know, just pass, just pass along stuff to people and a lot of people have given stuff to me. So it just kind of made the cycle complete. Thank you, Rebecca. I've been better... playing spite and malice with my sister who, uh, and it brought back a memory of when I was working at the School of the Arts as director of the re of high school residence life, and a young woman was bulimic. And every night she would come to my, I invited her because I knew she was very anxious and all, and she would come to my house, to my apartment, and we'd play spite and malice. And we never talked at that time about her bulimia or anything. We just played cards. and. 30 years later, she came back for a reunion and she called and asked if I'd meet her for lunch. And she told me how much that had meant to her. And I had kind of forgotten about it till she said it, but. Thank you, Sarah Lou. Beautiful. Hannah. I got to. And then Judy. I got to facilitate a listening healing campaign for a church that mm. uh, split and was hurting um, it was pretty profound. Mm. Thank you. Judy? Um, years ago, I lost a beloved cat and channeled my grief into fixing a full uh, Thanksgiving dinner for the people across the street that were dealing with a lot of health concerns. And that meant a lot to me and them too. Hallelujah. Lil and then Peggy. I just... Um, I think the greatest gift I ever have is being able to pay it forward because so many people paid it forward to me as I came through my earlier life. And so that is my great gift in life to be able to share and give to someone, especially when they may not know it. Um, I'm so grateful for those opportunities. Hmm. Yes, Peggy, then Carol. When I was teaching kindergarten class at church, I gave all the kids a little book called A Child's Garden of Verse. Many years later, I got a letter from one of those grown-up children who said that she had kept that book and now was reading it to her children. Wow. Wow. Carol, then Terry. I remember when I was a student in seminary and I talked with my first battered woman and she told me that God hated divorce and so she couldn't leave. And I told her that God hated even more to have God's own child hurt. And I told her that she deserved love and care. And she began to believe it and she got free. Hmm. Hmm. Terry, then, then, uh... Leslie. I got to move to North Carolina and help take care of my granddaughter. Mm. Leslie. Uh, right out of college, I moved to the, the country up in Mendocino County, California, and became a counselor at a uh, ranch, a 
place for you know healing mostly um, kids who took Ritalin and things like that. So I was able to establish a relationship with one autistic boy who wouldn't work with anybody else. And we did it through um, with rewarding him with something if he used the word for it, like please pass the butter, you know, and he'd yell it out and it was a big triumph. So at, uh, at that point, knowing nothing about what I was doing, I was actually able to teach this child to talk and then he was ready to go home to his birth family. And I, I'd love to see, he's, you know, he's in his 50s now. I'd love to see what became of his life. Oh, beautiful. Cynthia? Just go ahead and mute Cynthia. Hearing you all came to mind, this um, young college student that worked for me oh, years ago when I was acting public affairs officer in Nashville for the Corps of Engineers. And she had a real alcohol problem for someone so young. And she caused a lot of disruption in the office, not just to me, but the other staff. And there was nothing I could do. So I thought I failed in any way to help her. But a couple of years later, I got this letter in West Palm Beach, and she said that she was at whatever step of the AA program, she asked him forgiveness for those she hurt. And I was just glad to hear she had gotten help finally. So I had not expected that. That was good to know. Wonderful. Well, we weave all of these uh, amazing stories together as we are strengthened in our imagination of how Holy Spirit power moves in us and through us to build community, compassion, and hope. Alleluia. I want to take this moment in our worship service to offer deep gratitude to the Parkway United Church of Christ community. You know, in a time like this, we never know how things are going to go. And right now, uh, we give thanks and praise for the ways that you have continued to engage in digital worship, in uh, weekday uh, activities on Zoom, uh, how our uh, leadership has continued to make important decisions, and how you have continued to support the life and ministry of the church, both here and in all of our connections with your offering. Not only are you continuing to do that with your uh, uh, giving commitments for the year, but you've offered support to our neighbors. You've offered support to Wentz Food Pantry. You've offered support to the discretionary fund. You've offered support to the racial justice offering. You've offered support to the special offerings of the United Church of Christ, like one great hour of sharing and strengthen the church. We give thanks and praise for the commitment that you have expressed in all ways, in prayer, to stay connected and to be a beloved community as best we can in these difficult times. And we invite your continued support. Through the rest of this month, we are making a special offering to Wentz Memorial as they anticipate next fall celebrating their centennial so that they can have a good celebration and continue their profound ministry in the wider community. Our closing song is offered by Craig Collins, uh, All for a World, and uh, he's gonna invite you to sing along. Good morning, everyone. I invite you to make sure that your microphone is muted, and I'm going to give you the starting pitch then I will play the last line of the hymn to help you with the tonality. I will stand and we'll go one, two, and then we'll begin singing. Oh, it's the starting pitch. One, two, oh, for a world where everyone respects each other's ways, 
where love is lived and all is done with justice and with praise. The poor are rich, the weak are strong, the foolish ones are wise. Tell all who mourn, outcasts belong, who perishes will rise. Thanks be to God, and thank you, Craig, for that uh, beautiful leading. We um, will continue on. All we encourage you to stay on to this uh, Zoom meeting as we, after we conclude worship for a time of virtual coffee hour. It's been a very fruitful time of, of support and conversation. A reminder that um, our justice team will meet this Tuesday evening, uh, and we are inviting anybody uh, who is interested to be in touch with us. We're grateful for all of those who filled out your voter commitment sheets. Now we have a specific request. We have received a long list of people in Forsyth County uh, who are inactive voters. We received that from the local board of election. And we wanna take a portion of those as a congregation and write postcards. We've got their addresses. We wanna write postcards to encourage those individuals to get out to vote. So let us know if you are interested in participating in that endeavor. Uh, a week from today, next Sunday, August 30th, right after worship, we are gonna have a brief congregational meeting to uh, vote on the recommendation of our church council to call Andrea Simons to an ordained position as our youth minister. And so this is a, an exciting opportunity for us to, uh, to uh, engage in that commitment with Andrea. Uh, there was in the chat a question about how we can support those who are facing eviction. Uh, one of the ways is we, this coming week, we will put out in our announcements uh, a link to sign a petition. It's a statewide petition by a coalition of organizations to set up a support fund, a statewide support fund for people facing evictions. And uh, we will also have that on our agenda for our justice team meeting this week. It is always a delight and a reward to see your faces, to hear your voices in this virtual way of worship. Thank you for your prayers for your participation, for your praise continually all day long. Go forth this week in a just peace, connecting with all of the ways that we are able to build community. Amen. Amen. So I'm stopping Amen. our Facebook Live. I'm stopping our cloud recording.